Hey, what's up everybody? This is Artie here from Bearable Traders. I uh, wanted to start a new video series and talk about the market. Uh, close the week, usually release this on every Saturday. Close the week, what happened this week? How did the indices close? Uh, some, some key observation and then look ahead into next week. What are some of the key events? How can we as traders use this and come up with some trade ideas? And at the end of every video, I'll do a trade recap of my trade last week as well as some of the trades I'm setting up for next week uh, some of them might be swing trades some of them are uh, weekly option trades so uh, hopefully this will be a good series and you will enjoy it uh, definitely give me feedback and I want to utilize trading terminal as much as possible into these videos I think what we're building in trading terminal is very amazing uh, but users need to really learn how to actually use it and use the data to their advantage and that's one of the uh, goals that I want to achieve in this video series so definitely give me feedback um, don't be too harsh uh, with some of your feedback but I'm really excited so let's get started uh, taking a look at our trading terminal I mean the major indices uh, SPY, Q's, Dow, uh, IWM uh, they all closed the day on a red it was a really choppy day so if you were day trading it was it, it was kind of difficult and for the week uh, you know looking at one week kind of the same story all year right so utilities healthcare consumer staple these are bond like sectors so when we say bond like sectors what do we mean by that we mean these are getting really strong cash flows regardless of economic conditions and they're paying high dividends so uh, you know when you think of the bond bond has coupon payments uh, utility healthcare and consumer staples are equities but they call them bond like equities because they have really strong cash flows right the utilities you got to pay your bills um, healthcare you got to go to doctor no matter if there's a recession or not and they usually pay dividend and dividend you can think of like a coupon in the bond so these bond like sectors held up really nice which um, proves two things one inflation is a slowing down we've talked about this a lot right I mean we got the PPI number today that you know it came in hotter than expected but when you look at a bigger trend as a whole obviously inflation is coming down uh, we know bond perform better in disinflationary environments um, and second thing is investors are still more risk-off so they don't want to take a lot of risk uh, going into our calendar, we had some uh, really key earnings uh, this week. Um, the, the one that really stands out to me and I want to spend a little bit more time uh, talking about it is Lululemon. So let's actually take a look. Uh, you know, Lulu came in, had a really good uh, earning, but unfortunately their guidance was really weak. And we've talked about, you know, for 2020, the key topic that we talked about all the time and the topic that really moved the market was the Fed and the interest rate and the inflation story but i think in 2023 the topic that is going to move the market is no longer going to be inflation because we we know for a fact inflation is going to come down but it's going to be more about earnings and operational leverage and recession that's going to be the moving factor of the market in 2023 this is my number one prediction in this video so lulu came in and they basically had a really good earning but they said hey our guidance for q4 which is the holiday season is going to be low and by the way we have tons of unsold inventory what does unsold inventory mean it means they got to mark it down so when the inventory gets marked down that means prices are coming down when prices come down margins get impacted when margins get impacted earning goes down so it's it's kind of like a dominoes right one you know prices come down margin come down earnings come down earning comes down prices come down so it's kind of the domino and as a trader you really need to you don't have to be a fundamental analyst but you really need to kind of grab these pieces of information and really connect them together like a little necklace um, as you say uh, you can go to our trading terminal and go to the economic calendar and this is one of the most important underrated tools that we have on trading terminal we're offering traders for free is uh, you know we had the job numbers job num uh, job market is still very strong uh, and then today we had the uh, PPI right purchasing price pr uh, price index which kind of shows that hey uh, they say usually they say PPI is a leading indicator for CPI so this is how much people are paying for um, you know their purchases and then that usually leads into higher CPI in in about one or two months so it came in a little hotter than expected nothing crazy but uh, still market didn't really like that uh, like that information 
So the most important thing is now looking ahead into next week. I'll talk about some of the trades you could set up for next week, some of the some of the stuff that is happening. But a really important week full of um, events next week. So let's actually talk about it. So on Monday, you have consumer inflation expectation. Uh, you have some treasury bill uh, auctions. Uh, on Tuesday, you have the CPI numbers. This is for November, so this is kind of important. Hey, how is the CPI is going to come? Um, you know, is it going to become hotter than expected, cooler than expected, in line? Uh, this is probably going to be uh, some kind of a news. And then you got PMI data coming on Friday, as well as the FOMC meeting. So I think the Fed meeting is on the 14th. So tons of tons of events is happening in this week. So as a trader, you can play two ways. So later on in the video i'll tell you two ways that, that you can play this week whether you go long volatility or short volatility so next week on the 14th so i think a day after the cpi comes out we have the feds meeting so uh, you can go to feds future fund and kind of take a look at the probability and what the market thinks the fed's gonna do uh, at the current stage currently the feds fund rate is at at four percent so right here at, at 4% and the market believes 77% that it's going to be a 50 basis point. So if the CPI comes in really hot, uh, they might change this to 75. That's why there's a still a one in four chance of, um, you know, having, having a little larger uh, increase at 75 basis point. But for now, it seems like 50 basis point is almost uh, definitely a lock. So I'll tell you some of, the, some of the trades that I've actually set up um, going into the first quarter of 2022 and I'll tell you some short short term trade for next week that you can set up based on based on the chart and some of the macro uh, and fundamental work that I've done. So let's actually take a look at uh, look at this. So, you know, is this the first question here is, is this a bear market rally or is this a beginning of new uptrend? So that's a really important question. And let's see if we can answer it um, looking a little bit at the breadth of the market. So I personally think if this is a bear market rally. We're at the final stages of the bear market. So, um, you know, we might come down a little lower chop or maybe even test the lows. But, uh, you know, this is this is the final stages of the of the bear market. And we're kind of in the process of forming a bottom. So where am I getting this information from? Is it based on some technical level or uh, some, some kind of more research? Absolutely, right? So when you look at um, Goldman Sachs basket of more, most shorted stocks and you look at S&P 500, you can see that this is not really a short covering rally because the basket of most shortest, most shorted stock didn't really, didn't really come higher. And this 15% rally for S&P wasn't really followed by most shortest stock. This, this is telling you that the breadth is actually improving. So one of the tools we're adding into Trading Terminal is, uh, you know, a breadth indicator that looks at, uh, you know, how many, comp how many companies are actually making new 52-week high versus 52 weeks low, which companies are above their 50-day moving average versus their 200 moving average. And that can really give you a really good features of how, how the breadth is improving. And this is kind of showing that, hey, more companies are, um, you know, making new highs. And this, is, this kind of proves the point that we are at the late stage of this bear market. So if this was a bear market rally and, you know, we're at the late stage of a bear market, what's some of the best strategies or trades you could set up going into the next three months? One of, one of the ones that I think that is quite easy, to be honest, uh, high probability uh, with low risk is setting up some kind of a bear spread, a call, a bearish call spread right around 430. So selling some 430 calls and then buying some 435 or 440 calls for protection. So uh, a spread that looks like this, the payout diagram looks something like this. So you're betting that by end of the first quarter in 2023, so by end of March, the SPY is gonna hover somewhere around here. If it rallies, it only goes up to around here or it might even go lower. So whatever happens in the next 90 days will close below this 430 level. I think this is a high probability trade. Uh, I have it. Uh, I set it up a little uh, earlier uh, in the month. So at, at the la last uh, week of November, I set, set this trade up. But I think this is a really high probability trade that can actually make you some money. And if you're wrong, and if, if the rally continued, it's, a, it's very easy to hedge. You just buy the underlying SPY and you hedge your delta. So it's actually quite, uh, quite easy to hedge as well. Another 
trade that you could do going into next week is uh, something called strangle and I'll show you how to set this up but it's basically based on volatility it's a volatility play so you know if you go to our calendar page you can see there is tons of events happening next week so uh, you have um, the CPI number coming out, coming out. You have the Fed's minute. Uh, you have the Fed decision that is coming out. Uh, you have PMI numbers that are coming out. So lots of event is happening. Uh, but when you look at VIX, VIX is only at 22. So you can kind of argue that volatility is underpriced. So one of the things you could do. Let me go to my uh, interactive broker platform. One of the things that you could do is you could go long volatility. And how can you do that? Is by looking at let's say January 27 uh, expiry or maybe even earlier so maybe we could go to um, you know December 19 um, expiry so in 10 days you can go ahead and buy some out-of-the-money calls so let's say at 400 and buy some at out-of-the-money puts so let's say at 380 over here 382 so you know this strategy is called strangle basically what you're doing here is let me change the what you're doing is it's a direction neutral so you don't really care if the market is going up or down all you care about is volatility being mispriced so market if market is saying hey there's a 20 the volatility is at 23 VIX is at 23 um, you you're basically assuming that this is underpriced and VIX is going to be much higher next week with all these events that is happening so uh, you know if we breach this expected move either on an upside or on a downside so if the CPI let's say come in really hot and market sells off then this part of your leg will make money or if CPI comes in really cool uh, and Fed is you know not so not so hawkish and market rallies this part of your leg starts making money so I think a strangle strategy could be really profitable for next week of course strangles come with come with risk as well right um, but as you can see this strategy has about 40% uh, profit probability your break-even are somewhere around 375 or 406 so uh, what do you think? Uh, looking forward to next week. Uh, let me know about this format of this video if you like it. Uh, I try to do it every week uh, from now on. Recap the week that we had and then look into next week and come up with some trade ideas that you can, you can take, especially with options. Uh, for me, I had, a, I had a really decent week. I had a condor on Tesla, um, a bear spread on uh, Octa. Uh, Octa. So actually, let me show you my trade log really quickly. Bear spread on on Okta and I sold some calls uh, on Lululemon after earnings so this is another trade that I usually do after earnings Lulu gap down uh, and it started selling off once I believe the top was in uh, right around 3 350 what I did is I sold some premium right around here and obviously by the end of the day the selling continued and I get to keep all the premium and that's exactly what we want as option traders right we want to keep all that money so uh, let me know uh, definitely trade safe um, this is the last month. Let's see if we see that Santa Claus rally or not.